what is up YouTube welcome back to another video this one is the uh, 4,000 mile review of my 2022 lowrider s as you can see from the last 1,000 mile review we did a few things to the bike man it's, it's starting to look so good we got the the saddleman seat we got some uh, military style uh, saddlebags from thrash and supply we're gonna go into detail about all of it yeah as you can see we're still missing a, a two to one exhaust but that will be coming in, I would say, the next eight weeks, and I'll explain that here in a little bit. But yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys, 4,245 miles is what we're sitting at now, and a little over six months of ownership. I've gotten to know this bike pretty well as I daily commute it. Like, I'm talking every day I ride this bike, whether it's to work, on the weekends, every day. So first thing I wanna talk about is power delivery. Let's. Let's get this one over with. If you guys watch my other videos, you'll know that I've talked about this a little bit, but power delivery, as you should expect with a V-twin, especially a, a pretty big V-twin, the low end torque is, it's great, honestly. Like, that's something that made me want to buy a Harley was, was the torque, right? I, I test drove one and I was just like, Damn, that's something I've been missing with my previous bikes is, is torque, right? And I, I just like the feel of it. So the low end torque is great. The high end, I would say torque and horsepower lacking. Now this bike is completely restricted right now. No two, no exhaust. So you definitely want to stick around for whenever I get the exhaust. I'm looking at getting the stealth. I, I've heard time and time again, YouTubers, people in person, it opens up the bike a, a whole lot so we will definitely be making a comparison some time runs stuff like that but other than that power delivery i i can't complain especially if you're a big city commuter i mean you're gonna get up you're gonna go you're gonna pass traffic it's gonna be great so the next thing i want to talk about is uh handling look man handling on this bike is slept on if you've ever watched any of my videos you it's important to note that i have I would say nine years, eight years of sport bike history, okay? ZX6Rs, and I've, those are the two I've owned, but I've ridden almost every single one you could think of. The handling on this bike is awesome. I, I have no complaints about the handling. This is a stock suspension setup. I will be doing a model shock in the back, maybe an Olin's if they make it. I haven't done too much research on it, but the future plans for this channel is i'm going to start stunting this bike drifting rolling burnouts wheelies so we're we're gonna turn we're gonna move this channel over to some some badassery you feel me but the handling it's great it requires almost no effort to get the bike to lean over i test rode the the fat bob and as you can imagine bigger tires you know just the way the bike is set up the forks are angled out further it's a little bit harder to get to lean over and and I didn't want to be fighting a cruiser, right? I wanted to be riding something nimble, fun, but different, right? I was tired of the sport bike seating positions. Uh, so this, I, I have absolutely no complaints. I'm extremely happy with the handling that this bike provides in stock form. With that, I want to take, a, I want to take one second to say, first of all, thank you for checking out this video. You know, it helps my channel grow. If you could give me a like and subscribe, that I would be super grateful. I really appreciate it. We're trying to make this this Moto channel big, man. We're trying to blow it up. Anyway, back to the to the review here. The cost of ownership. Now, something that's sometimes neglected in some aspects, but definitely should be considered in all, is the cost of ownership. You got you got your maintenance costs, you got your gas costs, you got your insurance, and you got the price of the bike. So first of all, I want to say that I got this bike, no secrets, out the door from Harley dealership, Harley Davidson dealership, brand new, for $21.5. That's how much this bike cost me. So there's your baseline, right? Don't let them, because they were trying to get me for almost $25, bro, but I, I did some research, you know, I, they, 
you know, they don't want to lose business. So you just talk to all the Harley Davidson dealerships, right? Insurance, cheapest I've ever had. Full coverage, like high grade, you know, maybe a, I think $500 deductible, right? We're, we're keeping it as open as possible here. It's $70 a month for a brand new motorcycle and a relatively expensive one at that. I had $10,000 ZX6Rs that cost me double that in insurance. So cost of ownership, price and insurance wise, insurance definitely helps negate the cost of the bike, but obviously doesn't get rid of it completely. But uh, if you know, if you save, if you, if you can't live without a low rider, do your research, make sure they're not ripping you off and get you one that you know that you love so let's talk about maintenance costs right so so far i've only had to do the 1000 mile servicing we're about to hit 5k so we're definitely going to be doing that but that will be for a video when i do it but it was about 700 dollars. god I, I i honestly forget but that's a full bike inspection three hole oil change um to be expected i would highly recommend you pay to have the first 1k mild servicing done only reason is you most definitely want the paperwork saying hey look i had this done and then if, if something happens at 5k right they can't say well you neglected the maintenance or or whatever right but to be honest with you man i think after 1k you know they do that first initial thing you you can do most of your of your maintenance from there save yourself the money all that fun stuff but hey it's up to you Along with cost of ownership, I have on another bullet point here, but it, it goes along with it. It's gas, right? I expected to be getting a little bit more out of the tank. I'm going to be honest with you. Now, obviously, that has everything to do with my riding style, my how heavy my hand is. With I, I don't really have complaints, but I'm getting about 150 miles to a tank. Um, which is decent. This is a five gallon tank as I've been corrected before. I used to say it was uh, like a three and a half, but I was wrong. I mean, you do the math there. It's, it's decent. It only cost me here in San Diego $15 to fill up. No complaints cost wise. I just, I don't know. I just had an impression that I was going to be getting at least 200 miles out of a tank, which would have been nice. Uh, but I'm still pretty much filling up once a week. Uh, that seems to be the the magic the magic number. But there's really nothing else to say. Just wanted to put that in there so you guys know that if you daily commute, I would say about 20 miles a day. I, I drive to work 10 miles, 10 miles back. You will be filling up about once a week. Seating position, a big one for those that either want to be comfortable or are just curious, right? So the seating position is great, but let me explain. When you're sitting on the stock seat i'm 5'8 let's 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 backtrack here a minute i'm 5'8 on a good day i would i would say most days 5'7 okay got to give myself that extra inch on the stock seat i would say i was pretty comfortable okay the handlebar height all of that was decent it was in a good place um i wasn't leaned over as much uh I, you know but, and, and the stock seat is relatively comfortable. And I'm gonna be honest here, it's more comfortable than the Saddleman seat I got. But no one keeps that stock seat on, at least for the most part. I've, you know, a, a lot of people don't. All right, yeah, we're lane splitting this, fuck that. No U-turn, yeah, right, fuck that. Road signs are just suggestions. Hey, check it out, ba back to the seat. I'm sorry guys, I got stuck up in this traffic. As everybody does, they put a step up Saddleman seat on these bikes. I mean, it just cleans up the look completely. But here's the deal. When you do that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not tall compared to some other people, right? You sit up, I would say two, three inches higher. And now I am leaned over having to grab these, sorry, having to grab these, these bars is a little bit more uncomfortable. Let me get over for this person. So risers is a must, right? I'm probably gonna do nine and a half inch risers, but now I'm looking into like, well, I'm trying to wheelie the damn thing. Are taller risers better for that or no? Cause some people are now saying run six and a half. So I don't know, we're gonna have to look into it a little bit more, but 
that's where that's the position you're gonna be in right so be prepared for risers be prepared to get these handlebars up higher to be in any kind of comfortable seating position we are gonna pull over here so I can look at my phone and see what we got to talk about next long distance and a short commute okay differences i got you guys i got you because i just recently just recently did a long ass pretty much eight hour day of riding and uh yeah we will talk about that here in a second a little warm but we getting our tan on you feel me your boy white is i don't even have to say it you guys can just see and yes i got sunscreen on which everybody should if you're riding short sleeve which you know isn't the safest thing but you most definitely should right you don't want to be playing games with that kind of shit and drink water it's my little motivational tip for the day or or you know whatever you want to call it anyway long distance let's start with that man i don't know if i can tell you if you're if you're if your plan is to take a motorcycle on long rides between states I, I don't know if I can tell you that the lowrider s is necessarily the best bike you can buy and you can't convince me that the lowrider st would be any better all it has is is bags and a bigger fairing but that's not even what we're that's not even what was the problem like the wind manageable right you still sit low enough to where this fairing does something obviously a bigger fairing would help but I don't know um you know being only five eight or sorry we'll just say five seven you know you are still a little cramped i mean you it is mid mid controls out the factory you can get forward controls but i don't know i it's hard to explain but i'm going to tell you right now that the long distance trip it took a toll on me man my lower back this might have everything to do with the new seat too but my lower back my my shoulders god they were aching so bad uh even even my legs just in this certain position i was always having to stretch pull over i just don't know if if i could recommend the lowrider s for a touring bike like we're talking eight hours a day i mean if you're if you're cruising four hours easy day man you know just take a break halfway in between but that's just my honest opinion man you you got to give it to me but let's talk about short commutes god damn it this is the best bike i've ever owned for short commuting to work weekend rides around the city up in the mountains the best bike it is comfortable i don't want you to think because i don't recommend it for long rides that it isn't comfortable it's just not the bike specifically designed for it right it, you know i don't even know what they are road glides i mean street i don't even know man just the the suspension is a little bit stiffer i would consider this to be one of their performance side soft tails uh there's a reason why these and the dynas are the ones you see people wheeling right but yeah guys ripping the city Hopping on the highway for a, a few miles. I mean, this bike, it performs so well, but you, okay, yeah. But you really do have to uh, be mindful if you're planning on touring that this might not be the correct bike for you. Uh, and that kind of leads me to one other thing. Out the factory, man, right off the dealership floor, this thing has zero storage and I mean fucking zero. The first thing I did, I didn't even look at anything else. I bought this uh, bar bag from San Diego Customs. Highly recommend it. It's came in clutch so many times. I just throw my wallet keys in there. I basically have nothing in my pockets. It, 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 it frees it up, but you most definitely need to be ready for no storage and plan accordingly. Okay, enough about the commutes. You get my point. Let's talk about the aftermarket scene for the Lowrider S. The aftermarket scene for the for the Lowrider S specifically, because that's all I've ever looked up, is humongous. I mean, it's actually sometimes a detriment to its its own self because you just you just can't make up your mind, right? I, I mean, saddlebags, for example. I mean, obviously those are pretty universal, but I mean, Jesus, the style I wanted was just kind of like that military style low profile because i, I want to keep the slim profile of the lowrider s um but i definitely want to storage but just just that alone 
there's three companies that make them. I obviously went with Thrash and Supply, but but my God, guys, like everything, seats, and then and then there seems to be a hundred companies that customizes the seats. So who do you want to go with? Grips, levers. I mean, I mean, it's awesome. And then don't even get me started about exhaust because there's a million brands and a million different models of exhaust for this bike and i'm not even looking at the numbers like oh this one's pulling out 27 more horsepower i'm just looking for the one that sounds the best bro that's all i want and 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 i know a guy down here at san diego harley he's got the gunship gray lowrider s and he's got a stealth exhaust on there and that thing just sounds so meaty and throaty and and loud as fuck and that's the one i'm going with you can't change my mind i'm not in it for pulling out every last bit of horsepower i could get out of it i'm 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 doing it for the sound when it comes to exhaust and power but you know i'm not i'm not racing the damn thing trying to pull out milliseconds but anyway the aftermarket scene for this bike in summary is amazing and speaking of aftermarket i want to talk to you about my affiliate link right now uh born scum they're the they're the ones who custom made this seat all of their apparel hats shirts hoodies all of that uh but bike parts are excluded i made that mistake earlier in one of my last videos bike parts are excluded but if you do plan on buying anything from them type in the promo code zizzy moto no space same as my youtube channel and you will get 15 percent off in it it gives me a small commission, nothing crazy, but it definitely helps out the channel. We can get this bike built faster. And I will leave the promo code down in the description below so you can copy and paste it if you need to. But finally, guys, the last thing I want to talk about is the brakes. We've talked about handling in terms of steering, cornering, things pretty simple. But I wanted brakes to be its own category. The brakes work fine if you're a cruise around town type of guy. I would say that brake fade definitely is present if you're riding hard. And it doesn't it doesn't have that bite that I'm used to and and I'm used to the bite, right? But yeah, most definitely guys, you should you should look at upgrading your brakes if and only if you ride hard. If you're you know if you're just the type of rider that just hops on cruises right doesn't really try to push the limits you're gonna be more than fine but yeah I just I, I really wanted to focus on this because it's just something I learned over time didn't even come across my mind until about six months of ownership of this bike but the more I look at it the more I ride it the, the more comfortable and the harder I get on this bike the more I just realized hey look these brakes are not performance brakes pretty obvious right but guys that's going to be the end of this review i'm going to continue riding i'm going to go grab some coffee at a coffee coffee stand i just found like on this ride i want to go back and kind of check it out see uh what it's all about you know i'm all about supporting that local business but hey guys thank you so much for checking out this video i'm going to be reviewing the thrash and supply bags honestly today but give me a few days to drop it because i'm going to be working on this video first but just know they're highly recommended. No complaints. I want to I want to deep dive into them because they're the V2 or V3. I don't know. I have to relook. But it's their newest essential bag. So I have yet to see a review. So I want to be the one to do it. Please like, subscribe, check it out. Especially if you're looking at buying them. And uh, yeah, guys, enjoy the rest of the ride. See you on the next one.